Good afternoon, Mr. Knight. Good afternoon, Camille. Would you please state your full name for the record? Morgan Higby Knight. Mr. Knight, where are you from? I live in Los Angeles, California. And what do you do for a living? So I currently own and run Hicksville Pines Bud and Breakfast in Idlewild, California. And I created and ran uh, Hicksville Trailer Palace in Joshua Tree, California, starting in 2009. And how is Hicksville Pines Bud and Breakfast different from Hicksville Trailer Palace? So Hicksville Pines Bud and Breakfast is um, up in the mountains of Idlewild, which is a beautiful like snow town above Palm Springs and um, all the units are A-frames instead of trailers, which we have. It's obviously a very different climate than Joshua Tree, which is a desert area. Um, the rooms, which are themed at both places, are uh, trailers, vintage trailers from the 50s through the 70s at Hicksville Trailer Palace. So um, there's also different kind of amenities. There's a pool in Joshua Tree. Um, there's a rec room up at uh, Hicksville Pines. When did you first become the owner of the Trailer Palace? Trailer Palace, I started building it in 2009. It took about a year with uh, my collaborator, Stephen Butcher, and on the trailers. And we got done and opened um, in 2010. Did there come a time that you sold the Hicksville Trailer Palace? Yeah, I did at the beginning of 2020. I um, had some health issues and just it was too much to run both at the same time. So I chose a while because it was newer and shinier. And just for my sake, um, how long did you own the Trailer Palace? So 10 years of us being open, 11 years total. And what was the Hicksville Trailer Palace? So um, it started out as a uh, artist retreat. I was a filmmaker at the time and wanted a place to get away and work on film projects outside of Los Angeles. Uh, I also put in a recording studio so musicians could record records there. Uh, I had lived in New Orleans for five years and there was an amazing recording studio there called Kingsway where all the musicians would come and they'd live in this big mansion and record their records and I just thought that was a really neat thing for artists to be able to get away and create their um, create whatever they were working on. Over the course of the uh, build out of all the trailers, themed trailers, which I'm a huge fan of this hotel called Madonna Inn. And uh, so I wanted to do really detailed themed trailers. It became too expensive to just make a living off of an artist retreat. So I decided before I was done to make it a hotel as well. And what were your job responsibilities, generally speaking, when you owned the Hicksville Trailer Palace? So I would um, be live-in manager some nights, um, a couple nights a week. I would also drive out from Los Angeles twice a week and bring supplies that you can't get out in the Yucca Valley area and Joshua Tree. Um, there's just a lot of things like you know, Smart and Finals, Costco's and stuff. So I would drive that stuff out. Um, there's also no uh, USPS. so. Sometimes I'd have to get things shipped to my house and drive them out as well. Uh, I would also just do um, constantly building and creating new stuff at Trailer Palace, uh, whether it's new trailers or amenities. So I would be working on that stuff as well. I'm a big fan of the fact that Disneyland is always making it better and better. And when you were the live-in manager, does, does that mean that you spent the night at the Hicksville Trailer Palace? Yeah, we have a house on site um, where the recording studio was and there's a bedroom in there. So whoever is live-in manager those nights um, stays in the house and, and basically lives there. There's a kitchen and everything. Have you ever met the plaintiff in this case, Mr. Depp? I had met him really briefly at the Viper Room in the late 90s. Um, uh, I worked with some of the people that performed there and was good friends with uh, Skrull Robin from the Pussycat Dolls and um, some other friends in this band, the Imposters. So I was there and I met him once. How about Miss Hurd? Ever met her? I had never met her before. Um, they were guests at the hotel. When was the first time that you met Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd together? 
um, in late May 2013, uh, when they were guests, uh, Mr. Depp's assistant Nathan had rent out the entire place so they could have a night um, there in privacy. Um, what do you recall, if anything, about Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's arrival to the Hicksville Trailer Palace? Mr. Depp got lost, uh, so um, his security guard who arrived early asked me if I could go fetch them because he had an old car that um, didn't really fare on the dirt roads out there, which are pretty horrible. So um, I went out and made sure that they got themselves and the car back to Hicksville safely. Do you remember approximately at what time that was? It was three to four in the afternoon. What was Mr. Depp's demeanor when they first arrived? At Trailer Palace, he was super excited about the place, really complimentary, um, just had a lot of questions and um, was just seemed like he was in a really great mood. And how about Ms. Hurd's demeanor? Anything stick out? She was pretty quiet. Um, she uh, just kind of didn't say that much when I was giving them the tour of the grounds and the trailer. And was anyone else with Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd when they first arrived? Uh, there was people that were arriving throughout the afternoon. So um, there was, uh, um, I think, 10 to 12 people total ended up staying. Uh, the security guard had gotten there earlier and just to check out the place. But, um, but yeah. And did I understand your testimony previously that the entire trailer park was rented out by Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Yeah, the whole place slept, I believe at the time, about 25 people, but there was only 10 to 12 in this party. And who was part of that party besides Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? Um, I'm really horrible with names, but I remember one of them was uh, Ms. Hurd's sister and the security guard I mentioned before, but I honestly forgot his name too. What happened when Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd first came onto the property? So um, I gave them a tour of, we give all guests a tour of their specific trailer and the grounds and um, show them around the, uh, when someone rents the whole place, they get uh, another trailer called the bar trailer, which is basically a place to set up their alcohol and stuff. And some people in the group were just putting their beverages in that area. And where were you when uh, Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, did there come a time when Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd went to the bar trailer? Um, I didn't notice most of the time that it, my interactions with them, everything's kind of centrally located. So there's a fire pit, bar trailer and picnic tables all right in the same area. So they were generally around that area the entire evening that I saw them. And what did you observe of Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd as the evening progressed? Um, so Mr. Depp was super, uh, just super curious and really nice. Um, he was also really interested in my innkeeper because she was a musician, so they would talk about music a lot. At one point, uh, the innkeeper who lived at the next door property went home and grabbed her guitar and they had um, sung a song or two around the campfire uh, in the early evening. Um, there was another instance where Mr. Depp, the innkeeper, her name is Jenna, and myself were talking about books and music, and Ms. Hurd came over and kind of interjected. She seemed a little annoyed that um, Mr. Depp wasn't spending time with her. What about Ms. Hurd's demeanor made you think that she was annoyed? Um, I think just generally she, uh, it's hard, like she, I think, I don't know. It, it was just it was just like a gut reaction. Like I, I, I can't describe it, but um, you know. How long were you with Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd that evening? Generally. So throughout the course of the evening, I was probably forty, mostly with Mr. Depp, but forty-five minutes to an hour total. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, that's over the whole course until the end of the night after the check-in. And did you have an opportunity to observe Mr. De Depp interact with other people, guests on the property that evening? Yes, um, I saw him hang out with his security guard at one point and um, 
outside of the uh, time that him and Jenna were singing around the campfire. He was off by himself um, a lot of the time, and Miss Heard was over at the uh, at the um, campfire with her friends and seemed to have a good time. And if you haven't already, can you generally describe for the jury your observations of Miss Heard that evening? Um, yeah, she was. Uh, she was seemed to be having a really nice time with her friends around the campfire, um, and yeah, everyone was in a pretty good mood. Did there come a time in the evening that you observed Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard have a disagreement or an argument? Yes. Um, I was speaking with Mr. Depp uh, just one-on-one, -on -one, talking about Hicksville, and um, Ms. Heard uh, came over, and she said that I want to talk to you and seemed really upset about something. So I went and um, back in the house because it was really, um, they went off on their own and they she started yelling at him and I, I didn't want to hear it. It honestly was really triggering because I've been in an emotionally abusive Objection. relationship before. Objections. Move to strike. What's the objection? You're out for me. We approach. Okay, sure. Mr. Knight, will you please just explain for us what you observed when you saw Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd having an argument? Yes. Um, so Ms. Hurd asked him to go talk um, off to the side, and she was upset at him, and she was yelling at him. Um, and I personally had been in Objection. Uh, All right, I'll sustain the objection. Okay. okay. If you could just explain to the jury um, what you observed when you saw Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd having an argument. Okay. Um, he was kind of cowering and seemed almost afraid, and um, it was really, like, odd to see because he was older than her, obviously. So, um, but I just went back in the house because I didn't Objection. want to. You, you went to what he did. All right, I'll sustain us, too. Understood. So after you observed the argument, fair to say you went back to the tra to your house on site? Yes, I did, yeah. Okay. Um, what happened after that? So when I saw Mr. Depp um, on my next rounds, he apologized profusely and said, I'm really sorry about that. She was upset. Objection, because... Your Honor, hearsay. Sustained. Next question. What, if any, type of reaction did Mr. Depp have? He was just really... Objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. He's going to say it again. It's the reaction. It's not the statement. All right. If you could make that clear, that's yeah. fine. Just what type of physical reaction did Mr. Depp have after the argument between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd? He honestly, throughout the rest of the night, became a lot more quiet and, um, and was uh, just very more petulant. In the beginning of the night, he... Um, was a lot more outgoing and extroverted, and throughout, as the course of the night went on, he was less and less so and more quiet. Did you observe any of the guests consuming alcohol while on the property? Um, I assume they were. I mean, people had cups, and there was alcohol set up in the bar trailer, but I didn't physically see them pour alcohol into their cup and cup go into the mouth, per se. Did you witness Mr. Depp drink any alcohol that evening? I couldn't say. Okay. Anything about Mr. Depp's demeanor that made you think he was perhaps intoxicated? Yes, um, as the night went on, he, uh, I am a former bar owner, so I'm, even though I wasn't drinking that night, I'm very familiar with the uh, signs. So um, 
just as the night went on, like I said, he became more and more quiet, but he also, as we would have conversations, his uh, head would kind of sway a little bit back and forth, which was a little, you know, it was he was much less sharp than he was earlier in the night. Did Miss Hurd appear intoxicated to you? Um, she did. Uh, she seemed, I think when she was angry at him, it, it seemed like she was intoxicated, but that's just based on my experience and my own personal trauma dealing with abuse. Okay. Objection, Your Honor, move to strike. All right, I'll sustain the objection. We'll strike it from the record. Please disregard that testimony. Did you observe anyone do or take drugs? I did not. Did you witness Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd interact other than the argument that you previously described for the jury? Um, the, at the end of the night, I heard a commotion. I was inside the house and came out. I couldn't tell what was going on. Um, and Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd were having a discussion about, um, about I, I'm not sure what, but then they went to their trailer at that point. A lot of people had already gone to bed. So um, it, it just kind of petered out. Everyone went to bed, including myself, and I didn't hear anything else the rest of the night. What time did the evening come to an end? I'd say it was almost around 3 a.m. Did you ever see Mr. Depp grab anyone? Objection no. leading. Sustained. Leading. Did you ever see Mr. Depp become physical with anyone? Objection leading. Sustained. Next question. Okay. Did you ever witness Mr. Depp get angry that evening? Objection leading. Sustained. What, if anything, happened the next morning? Um, the next morning, we have checkout at noon at the time uh, before COVID. And so uh, around 11 o'clock, one of my innkeepers let me know that there was some damage. Objection, hearsay. Um, Did something happen that caused you to go to Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's trailer? Yes, I was informed that. Objection, hearsay. It's not being offered for the truth, Your Honor. I mean, if, may we approach on this okay, one topic? Okay, sure. Thank you. <laughs>
In fact, we have a, a something we call a piggy fee uh, that we address to guests that if there's anything what we call inconsiderate or unusually large messes, we charge them extra for it for a $25 an hour cleaning fee, but they did not receive one of those because everything outside of light fixture looks fine. And what was your reaction to seeing the damaged light fixture? Um, to be honest, I was relieved because it was not a big deal. I just tucked, there was already another light in the room. So I just tucked the wires in the wall until I had a few months later time to um, buy. It was matching sconce with another one in the room. So I had to, on eBay, find a matching pair that would fit there. And uh, when I finally got around to it, I was able to get that and charge it to uh, Nathan, who had, whose credit card I had. And what was your understanding of who Nathan was? Mr. Depp's assistant. Okay. And what did you charge Nathan or Mr. Depp for replacing that, that pair of light fixtures? The pair came out to $62. Okay. While you were on site, um, Mr. Knight, did you ever wear a mesh shirt? <laughs> No, I would uh, absolutely never wear that. <laughs> At any time during Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd's stay on the property, did you see Mr. Depp become physical with anyone? Objection I did not. leading. Okay. Overruled. That's right. I'm sorry, that answer was? Uh, I, I never saw Mr. Depp get physical with anyone when I saw him. Okay. Thank you, All Your right. Honor. Cross examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Knight, you are a pretty big fan of 